Okay, so today we'll be talking about arrays. What is an array? Array is a container which can hold a fixed number of items, and these items should be of the same type. Most of the data structures make use of arrays to implement their algorithms. Following are the important terms to understand the concept of array. First, we have the element. So each item is stored in an array is called an element. Then the next one is the index. Each location of an element in an array has a numerical index, which is used to identify the element. In other programming languages, sometimes they refer to index as a subscript, while others may call it pointers, but Using the word pointer will be more confusing since we have uh, pointer variables, especially in C language. So let's just make use of the word index. Array representation. Arrays can be declared in various ways in different languages. So for illustration, let's take the C declaration. So in, in this line, we can see that we have here the data type integer, and then the name of the variable array, then we have here the size of the array. So here, the array was also initialized. So we have here now the elements of the array. So if you're going to count the number of elements, there are 10 elements, because that's the size of the array. Let's continue with the array representation. So as per the previous slide uh, illustration, following are the important points to be considered. So in an array, the index starts with zero. The array length is 10, which means it can store 10 elements. So we have seen that a while ago. And also we can see that in our illustration below. Each element can be accessed via its index. For example, we can fetch an element at index 6. So the value is actually 27. What are the basic operations for arrays? So following are the basic operations supported by an array. So these are traverse. So we use traverse to print all array elements one by one or maybe even to retrieve the elements of the array one by one. And then we have insertion. That is when we add an element at the given index. So it can be at the beginning, at the end, or in the middle of the array. Then we also have deletion. Deletes an element at the given index. Again, the same with insertion. We can delete at the beginning of the array, at the end of the array, or at the middle of the array. Then we have search, so searches an element using the given index or by the value. And then we have update, updates an element at the given index, so we can replace the value. Default values of elements in C. So if we declare an array without initializing the values, then this will be the default values. So again, for Boolean, it will be all false. For character, it will be zero or uh, that's the same as null and, and so on and so forth. So let me be discussing that in detail. Now we have here the traverse operation. So this operation is traversed through the elements of an array or navigate the elements of an array. So here we have an example code in C language. So the program traverses and prints the elements of an array. When we compile and execute the above program, it produces the following result. So the output will be the original array elements are then the following output. So how did we arrive at that output? We'll be explaining that later. 
So here we have now the explanation of the Traverse program. So let's try to dissect the program. So the says here that the first line after the main, uh, this line, you main, which is actually the name of the function or the main function, declares and initializes the array LA. So this one declares the array LA. And at the same time, initializes the elements or the values of the array. The line next to that declare three integers, three integer variables. These are the item, which is initialized to the value of 10, k, which is initialized to the value of 3, and n. And here represent the number of elements. That's why we have five. K is a position or index, and we'll be using this in later examples. The next line declares two variables, which are actually used as counters. So we have the variable i and j, and both were initialized with their values. So i equal to zero and j equal to n. <clears throat> After the first three lines, the memory of the computer will look something like this. So these are the variables. So first, let's we have here the array, and these are the values of the array. So one, three, five, seven, and eight. And the index of this value, one, is actually zero. And for three, it's one, and so on and so forth. So these are the indices. So as we have said a while ago, the index of an array will start with zero. And then we have declared several variables. So we have item 10, which will be used in later examples. We have k equal to 3, also to be used in later examples. We have n equal to 5, the number of elements. Then we have two counters, i and j, with i initialized to 0 and j initialized to the value of n, which is actually equal to 5. So after the first three lines, the next line is printf, is the printf command. So this line will just print the text inside the command, the original array elements are, and then backslash n. So that means it will, uh, the printout will go to the next line. Then the next three lines is actually a loop. With the loop controlling variable i initialized to zero, so that's this place, and the loop condition is i should be lesser than n for the loop to iterate. And then at the end of each loop, at the end of each iteration, we have here i plus plus, that means we're going to add one to i for every iteration. Inside the loop is actually a print statement that will print LA, so that's LA, square bracket, and then the percent D will represent or will be substituted by the value of I, which is actually the value of our controlling variable, equal to another percent D that will be substituted by the value of LA, indexed by i. Okay, so that will be the output la. Then we have here the index with the value of i equal to, this one will be the value of la indexed by i. So let's take a look at the uh, loop. So in the first iteration of the loop, the values of the variables will be the same and in the printout, so LA indexed by the value of I is zero, that's why zero is equal to the element inside that particular uh, index or where the index is pointing. <clears throat> so that's equal to one. So after the first loop, we have here as our output LA zero is equal to one. After printing, then the loop adds one to i. So on the next loop, 
So in our second iteration, I now is equal to 1. And in our printout, we'll now be pointing to index equal to 1. So the index is 1 highlighted. So the output so far will be, so this was our output on the first iteration. And this one will be added to our output, LA1 equals 3. So after printing again, we add 1 to I. So I now becomes 2. And since I is 2, we'll be pointing now to LA index by 2. So the output will be LA2 equal to 5. And then again, add 1 to loop. So I now is equal to 3. So the output now will be... So in addition to what we have previously have, we have LA3 equals 7. Then again, add 1 to I. So I now is equal to 4. So 4, that's, that is the index. It will be pointing to this value. So if we print, this will be the output as we have uh, displayed a while ago. So that's how we traverse an array.